I want to speak to uh, the term that, that we've used here uh, that gets to me, which is the term, it's just okay. Um, both of these have shared that, and I want to say that it's just okay isn't enough. That's like not there yet <laughs> for me. <clears throat> so it may be halfway there, but it's not complete, and it's certainly not towards the perfection that I think is the ultimate that I strive for. How do I know the ultimate? Um, I think one thing that we that we have or that I see is that uh, and I'm probably the old I'm the old one here next to God I'm the oldest one here <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we have the Torah for common sense we read it the one this one knows uh, a lot of common sense, and that's behind some of the perfection. It's not striving for the ideal. It is always striving for the ideal, but it's let's just think this one through, and what could have tied that, that drapery to the ceiling in a more aesthetic manner? Or could we pull the drapery out to the end of the rod and conceal the rod a little bit more? <laughs> there are always those things that, that we just gravitate toward. And it's no big deal. And many of you just don't see it or give one royal damn about it, right? <laughs> and we're just going through life just checking these things out. And sometimes they're so small that we just keep them to ourselves because we know it doesn't bother anybody but us. You know. So hold that one for a second. Um, so Richard, there's this kind of, I'm always attending to what needs to be better and what needs to be fixed. It almost feels like there's a little self-righteousness in there, like I know better than other people. No, I, I don't go to that. I just think, I just, uh, that's why I call it common sense. I don't think it's any great... But you've empirical got empirical sense. I just but think you've got the book. You've got the Torah. We don't have it. Spend a half an hour with me, and I'll teach you the book. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> I wanted to get the truth of it. <laughs> it's a good book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Deb. So many thoughts going through my mind. Because I have learned in a lot of ways, especially in the last well, three years, that there are a lot of things that just don't matter anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just so totally identifying with I am at my core a perfectionist. And uh, what has happened to me in the last two and a half plus years, but it was, as I know now, it was coming on for the last three, mm -hmm. is my husband almost died. He's on an organ transplant list. So my perspective has just really changed, and it has been a huge thing in my own development, in my own evolution, shall we say. The worst thing and the best thing that ever could have happened to me, because I used to be, it has to be this way, and it's not good enough. And what I've learned is that there are some things that have to be perfect. He could not have a better caregiver. He could not have, I mean, I know. <laughs> You're on it. I am on it. I am on all of it. What did you do for him? I mean, you I were saved his life really? to start. Okay? And then I have just hung with all of the details mm -hmm. right up my alley mm -hmm. um, in terms of old medical care and signs and all that. And I, am, I feel absolutely right. I don't know about righteous so solid about communicating any of that, um, even if it embarrasses him, to, I mean, to the right people, of course, you know, to, to tell on him if I have to, because he's on a transplant list now, and it's a matter of, 
you play or you're off. Okay, so there, you, there I'm satisfied with my, am I right and wrong? But there's so much else in life that just doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. My house is a mess now and I could care. You know, but if company comes, I do clean the toilet and pick up the dog hair. You know, I mean, there are certain things, that, you know, <coughs> certain, certain, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's amazing how, how I have changed, and I've been conscious of the change. I've been very conscious of it because it used to be that so much wasn't good enough. And now, you know, so much of my life is, is good enough. So as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking, it's so, this perfectionism stuff is so much my core that where I can let go is when it's not about life or death or survival, but when it is, I'm there. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just I don't know. As, um, as you're speaking, I can feel like this in, like intensity yeah. and underneath it is sadness. Yeah, well, there is. What, um, what's a sadness? Um, Well, obviously, my husband, who's a seven, who just irks me sometimes, <laughs> and um, it is so wonderful. I mean, th his his love of life is what I want to preserve, as well as him. And it's, there's so much. It's not fair about this. It's not fair that this should happen to him. It's not fair that it should happen to me. I didn't do anything to, you know, to deserve this right. as such. And yet I feel so committed that I'm so lucky that I get to be there for him. Um, and it's not fair the way they go about, don't, you know, divvying up organs. And it's not fair that I don't know. It's not easy, you know, talking about not knowing. Um, I've gotten better with that, too. I can't know. I've got to trust. Yeah. It'll all work out the way it needs to. The fairness is huge. I leak. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so, fairness so it is feels huge. like what's fair is a big deal. Yeah, it always has been. It's like it's, the, uh, yep. the, who the, who they give the organs to isn't yep. fair. Yep. That it happened to him isn't fair. That it's happening to you. Like you, I didn't do anything to deserve this. Yeah. And that's there's some anger and resentment at times. That, I mean, I really was listening to the anger stuff. I mean, it's there. And then there's a, it also feels like there's some grace with helping. Yeah. Like there's something where it's like. Purpose. Uh, 